Hey everyone! Welcome back to Winterfell Camp, me lad from the woods. Well, I just had a wicked, wicked, and we must have been talking for a couple hours, digger that I talk too often in the comments and stuff. Uh, and we talk about all kinds of stuff, and I watch his channel with the uh, metal detecting. Anyways, we just had a wicked couple hour conversation. Um, Digger had given me some opinion and advice on the bus situation, which is what I'm going to talk about. And uh, I have been frozen, like not able to make a decision, make a move. I know that the bus being in Montreal was making things really hard to make it sell. The whole situation with the motor. Uh, I mean, it's hard to sell something that doesn't have a motor that's working. So I'm you know, losing money, all that stuff. Okay, I'm eating too because I haven't eaten in several hours. And I was just telling Digger that I needed to have something in my belly. Because with the Ozempic, the reason people get nauseous is that when you're eating, uh, sorry, when you're taking the Ozempic, you uh, will feel full all the time. So you're tempted not to eat, but you can't do that because your stomach is actually empty. It only makes it feel full, but your stomach is still empty is the whole point. So anyways, so in order not to get nauseous, I have something to eat. Even a saltine cracker is better than nothing when you do that. I, I haven't got any saltines here today. I got to go shopping next week. I'm, you know, I need saltines and stuff. So anyway, that's why I'm kind of eating this peanut butter thing because I wanted to do this right away before I forget things and it's fresh in my mind. So anyway, Digger wrote me a, two different emails, not emails, Instagram, you know, the message thing. And he was talking about the bus and what he thought, like, you know, what the whole situation was, because obviously he, you know, he knows from the, from the video. So anyways, it spurred me on. It was like, okay, you know what? He's making sense here. So I showed it to True. Same thing. He's making sense. True said, like, I told you that from the start as well. Um, um, and then I showed it. I, I, I read, I actually read the entire message to Mark, my, you know, my friend and boss at Starlink. Um, and he said the same thing. So it was kind of like, okay, but it was actually Digger that kind of went, like he saw it from a point of view from where I'm talking on the camera and everything. So he no, only knows what I've said, but, you know, he was able to kind of cut through the bullshit and say, well, you know, this way, this way, that way, this way, that way. And it's like, okay, yeah, you know what? This makes a whole lot of sense. So I called Mark up. I said, well, am I still getting my raise at the end of the month? Yeah, it's a significant one. He says, yeah. And I said, well, I said, here's the thing. I'm really stressed out about this bus. I'm losing too much money. The bus is up there. I hate being a drag on the truck center and all that because it's sitting in their yard. And it's like I said before, it's a really busy truck center and everything. And like I said, these people have been so nice to me. I mean, you know, they told me like, don't spend your money on this, Paul. It's just not worth it. Sorry, lad to you other folks. But anyways, so between them and my friends and then Digger finally sending me a message, I only saw it this morning or today. So I read it and that's when I went, you know what, fuck this, we're going to get that thing back here. So I asked Mark for a, an advance loan kind of thing on my pay. He agreed to that. He's sending the money over tomorrow, which then I'm going to e-transfer it to the towing company that was so good to me. Um, I talked to Jacques there, who is the guy that I talked to... Uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I guess. And he quoted me $900 to bring the bus from the truck center in Montreal all the way back here to the boonies. Hopefully he sends that young lad that picked me up in the first place. That guy is uh, JC. He's really cool. JC, you ever see this, man? I told your boss how much I liked you. You know, so just so you know, if your boss ever says anything, hopefully he gives you a raise, brother. I don't know if you're not paid well. I, I think you're probably paid well. That looks like a really slick, good company there. Anyways, um, they, they got him in a nice truck too. But anyways, uh, so they, they'll flat bed it down to here. They'll park it wherever I want to park it, and then they'll head back. So, But I know I definitely have made some new friends at the truck center and the towing company. And I told them, I said, like, I'm not a stranger to Quebec. It's not like you're never going to hear from me again because, A, uh, I see Anna, who lives in St. Leonard, which is Montreal, like a part of Montreal. And then I went with her to that place, Danville, Quebec, which I definitely want to go back up there, ATV riding and stuff, camping, fishing, whatever. 
Um, I mean, I didn't know it was like that there, so I have to go see that. So then I told him I would just drop in to say hello on my way through. I said, traffic pisses me off. I said, I'd come stand here with you for a, an hour until the traffic bucks off. You know, and he's kind of, um, Brendan was kind of laughing about that at the truck center. And I'm like, I said, far as I'm concerned, the way you guys treated me and the way you've been, I said, you become like instant friends. And I said, there's probably going to be a time I'll need you again. So, you know. I'm going to buy another RV because he said you're not going to keep that. I said, no, 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 no. I said that, you know, a friend from online talked to me a little bit today, uh, sent me some message. So I said, no, I'm making the move. So he was happy to hear that. Jacques, you know, said, yeah, yeah, we'll, you know, quote the same price, 900 bucks to bring it down here. And I said, that's pretty fair considering, you know, because like for where they are, they're in the far west end of Montreal. So if you were to take a car and drive from there, assuming you're not leaving in traffic time, you're a good two, two and a half hours in a car. So now with him, he's got to tie up a truck to A, to get up, go pick it up at the truck center, which is only five minutes away, but he's got to back up, he's got to load it, he's got to strap it, he's got to chain it. I mean, it's a significant process to be safe. So then he drives down here. Now he's not going to be driving 110 kilometers an hour down highway uh, 17. I mean, he's in a truck, he's carrying a bus. So, I mean, he's probably going to be barely making the speed limit, although their trucks look like they're pretty, uh, pretty, uh, like they got some nice motors. And so I was asking, cause I mean, I'm a truck driver and I'm like, what's in this Caterpillar? Oh, I'm like, Ooh, I said my second favorite motor. And he's like, what's your favorite? And I said, well, come along. And he's a truck driver. He knew what come along meant Cummings. And, uh, I said, I absolutely despise Detroit's or at least the old two stroke Detroit's. I said, my first dump truck was a two stroke Detroit and I hated it anyways. So he's not going to be able to pound pound the ground like as they say so i'm figuring that they're going to be tying that it'll probably take him an hour to load the truck like said and done by the time he leaves the shop drives there backs up sees eric gets the keys um you know loads the truck chains it down and then you know gets back onto the highway and headed this way and assuming he hasn't done that like during traffic hour so i'm i'm guessing that he would be up early get to the shop i don't know what time the truck center no opens but they do but if they can beat the traffic heading this way you know, and they're talking next Monday or Tuesday. So they're not going to have to deal with weekend traffic or anything like that. You know, people going camping, all that kind of stuff, cottages, whatever. So, um, but he'll be tying up the truck for a, a, a full day. And if you average out, like he picked up my uh, bus for $360 on Highway 40, which I've spoke about before, it's an insane highway. Anyways, um, so... I don't know what they charge to pick up a car, but I mean, even if he only did three trucks a day and he's only driven in Montreal, I mean, he's made over a thousand dollars already. So he's doing one trip all the way here, driving back empty. I mean, he doesn't have a load to take back. He's just a flatbed. I don't think I could find him something. I'll ask him if he wants me to try and find him something, but I don't think I would, I don't know if I don't think I'd be able to. I just hate to see the truck go back empty just for the driver and the company's sake. Anyways, um, so he's tying up the truck all day. So 900 bucks, it's going to be 200 bucks in fuel for sure to go there and back. It's going to be, uh, or well, maybe not 200. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe not quite 200, but 150 anyways. And then there's, of course, the company has to pay the driver. And that's going to be an eight hour day for the driver, if not longer. And so, I mean, they're not making a whole lot of money on it. So it's not like they're, you know, jipping me to, yeah, well, we'll fuck this guy around. It's going to cost us $100 and we'll make 800 No, he's not doing that at all. It's, it, I mean, because I, like I say, I'm a former trucker, so I can, I can figure out the hours, fuel, the time, all the rest of it. It's like they're not making a whole lot of money on this. So anyways, uh, like I say, tying up a truck, I mean, that was... You know, I mean, the possible work that truck could be getting in a day in Montreal, a city of four million people. So, well, that four million people, including the outer areas. And uh, so and they're, they're a fairly large tow truck company. Like I, I saw their yard. There were a lot of trucks sitting in there. And I imagine he had a lot more on the road, too. And that's only one office. I don't know. They might have more than one off, um, um, yard parts. I know. I never actually checked. I should ask Jacques when I talk to him tomorrow. So Jacques calling me tomorrow from the tow truck. 
company and he's going to confirm the day either Monday or Tuesday. Um, I don't have to go up there. I can pay him. I asked him, I said, well, can I just e-transfer you the, the money over? He said, yeah, yeah, no problem there. And I'm like, great. I don't have to come up there. No, great. So I got a lot of stuff sitting in the bus. So that's the other thing. I mean, I need my stuff back. Uh, my vape, Digger and I were just talking about a bunch of stuff, rosin and stuff, and I don't even have my vape. And I'm like, fuck, do I ever miss it? So but it'll be easier to sell here in Ontario. Uh, for you Americans that don't really understand Canada, Ontario and Quebec, uh, most of the, the entire country and Quebec have this thing that's been going on for, I don't know, 150 years. It has to do with language and society and a whole bunch of things. So that Quebec almost left uh, the Canada back in the 70s when René Lebec was uh, premier and all that stuff and the smart Trudeau not the dummy we have now but his father and the ten uh, premiers they came up with our constitution and charter of rights and that kind of placated Quebec at least for a certain amount of time but anyway so people from Ontario like you know oh I have to go to Quebec I have to go to Montreal to get that bus no no I'm not doing that okay so that's the kind of thing although I try to tell people the rest of Canada it's like we're not Canada if we don't have Quebec and the French thing, all we are is a 51st state. Okay. Quebec is what makes us Canadians. Okay. We're Canadians, English, the way we are. We have our First Nations brothers and sisters. We have more of them than anywhere else. And, uh, but Quebec is what actually makes us Canadians because most of the Canadians are raised to speak French. You know, a lot of English Canadians don't as a rule, but more do than don't nowadays. But I mean, so it's a part of our society and it's not something that can just be torn away very easily. So, um, so Ontario people, I have a better chance of selling in Ontario. The wood stove that's in it creates a problem for a safety check or certification in Quebec because I've, I've already found out that they don't really like having those stoves in there. Even though the stove has a wet certification, which makes it legal in every other province, Quebec is kind of like, uh, not really big on certifying these. And they, they wouldn't certify the bus when Wayne brought it up there to sell to a Quebec couple. He actually drove it to Montreal before he sold it to me. They were ahead of me in the list. They brought it up, did the safety. They were fine with everything that needed to be done for the safety, but then the people at the garage, which in Quebec is run by the government for the certifications, not private garages like here. Even though they got to do government rules here, it's a different ball game in Quebec. So anyways, they kind of said, eh, we're not real big on this. So the Quebec couple immediately backed off and that's how I got it. So anyways, so selling it up there is just a big pain in the balls. And like Digger was saying, was if I can get it back here and I get somebody like my friend True who can work on diesels and stuff, he can have a look at it. He said from the start he wants to have a look at it. So now the thing is, I even if it was something easy to fix, let's say True gets it here and he's like, oh, fuck, this is a couple hundred dollars or whatever. You know, whatever the case is, I'm not keeping it. So, but like True says, I can, you know, kind of recoup the money I got into it. You know, you can sell it as a running motor. Well, Digger said that very same thing this morning on the, on the, on the Instagram thing. And uh, it's like, okay, you know what? It'll, it, it's sitting here out front with a for sale sign on it. I'm still putting this up on Kijiji and the Facebook groups and all that. But now when I say to somebody, well, where is it located? Well, I'm up in Lanark an hour west of Ottawa. Now people from Toronto or, you know, other places like that's, They'll be fine with coming that. So it gives me a lot wider scope of people to buy it. So anyway, smart move. Thank you, my friend Digger from from the United States. And uh, it was very good advice and opinion. I really uh, needed to hear that, obviously, because it, it spurred me to actually unfreeze myself and do something about it. So now the stress levels have gone. Because I know it's going to be here at the latest Tuesday next week. I should be able to sell it quicker, get myself onto another RV and get this whole program started that I, you know, wanted to do. And uh, somebody else can deal with the bus. And, uh, you know, I mean, if it's somebody that's really handy with a wrench and everything, I had one guy from Tweed um, that wanted to drop a, a bigger diesel in it. And I don't know, he seemed to think he could. So, I mean, I can't say to that, I would assume that the bigger diesel uh, might be bigger, so how it would fit, I don't know. But like I say, this is way out of my wheelhouse. But the point is, 
is that somebody else can deal with it. They may want to take the entire motor out, put another one in. They may fix the one that they've got. Who knows? But the bus from the motor back is ace with the solar system in it, like the solar panel system in it, that fancy rack on top. That rack was custom built for $12,000. Like the thing you can go up and lay down and tan on top next to the solar panels and all that. Imagine that. So anyways, $12,000 for that fucking thing. Um, I had to put on an entire new exhaust system from front to back, including the catalytic converter. That came all the way from Ohio because, and they and it comes in one piece, so it had to sit on like two pallets, which of course that costs money when you're shipping that shit. So anyways, I mean, you know, so I put some substantial money into it. So there we go. I think I'm happy with this situation. If the bus ends up sitting here for five months, which I don't want it to, obviously, but if it does... At least I'm not going to lose it. It's here. I got my eyes on it. And so on. It won't last five months here. And uh, if True is able to fix it, fine. You know what? Then I can just raise the price even higher. Go, you know, and recoup my money with, the, you know, saying, hey, listen, it's safety in Ontario. Safety's still good. It was only in January. It's good for a certain amount of time. And then, uh, of course, the motor uh, wasn't as serious as we thought it was or whatever. Or True was able to fix it. So you're on the road. Away you go. So we'll see what happens with that. So like I said, thank you to, to, um, to Digger for that. He had some very good ideas and we just had a long conversation and he expounded more on what he was saying and stuff. So anywho, um, I guess that's about it. So I'm, I'm relaxed. I've started putting ads back up in the groups with the new, you know, it's okay, it's in Lanark, you know, blah, 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 blah. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, having a little bit of a peanut butter, um, you know, just to get something in my stomach. I think I want another coffee. I've had only, I think, two coffees today, so I'm definitely due for another one. It's quarter to 10 to 9. It's still light out. So, anyway, mosquitoes are terrible. It rained uh, here for the last three days with thunderstorms, so it's not even habitable outside right now with the mosquitoes. They'll, they'll settle down in a couple of days. I'd, I've not seen black fly, so black fly season may actually be over here. So we'll see. Uh, the tent survived the big rainstorms. There was a little bit of water in the front, but that's only because the tent wasn't pulled out properly. So the water was able to pool and it leaked through a seam. And the tent's overdue for a silicone, uh, silicone spray thing. Okay. So, all right. Well, it's 17 minutes. I could do another video, but I'm going to end it here so I don't have to sit there and cut them in half or whatever. I can just say part one, part two, but I'm filming them separately. So, bye-bye on this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. All the usual stuff. We're up to 362 people. I mean, we're just steady every day. It's growing. Pretty cool. And, of course, more people are starting to talk to me now. And that's the other thing. We'll mention that in the next video. Okay? Stay out there.